exactly surprised this part. I've never done this before. So this in this video here, this is the first time I'm using this. So it doesn't matter. Here's an error here. Okay. Okay, we can't. Uh, oops, we can't invoke a possibly undefined null function with the optional chaining operator. So. It Welcome back to Arcade. I am Super Tommy, and in this video, we're going to look at state machines. So we're doing something a little bit differently here at, at um, um, Arcade. Uh, so we're going to try to make videos um, based on topics that we'll be doing to make games that we intend to release on Arcade.co. So this is a Ludo uh, board game where you have your four pieces in here, and each player takes a turn to roll the dice. And if you get a six, you can come out with the piece and you go through this um, board until you reach home for your uh, respective color. So red goes to red, etc. green to green. And you wanna do that, be the first one to get all your pieces home. So we're going to try and um, build this game and actually get it out there for you guys to use and play. It'll be multiplayer um, across the network. So that's a topic a lot of you have wanted us to cover. And we will do that, not in this particular video, but we're going to use a socket server and we'll show you how to uh, set that up. So that's the new things we'll be doing here at Arcade, uh, building games that we're gonna ship and then show you uh, the process while we're doing. So there's gonna be some learning in public, building in public. Hopefully that'll help you guys uh, build the games that you're working on. So the state machine, um, we've talked about states in a blog post. If you go to the arcade blog, you can find the state pattern for character movement in phase three post. And we did not make a state machine in this blog post. Um, instead, we created a much simpler uh, usage of the state pattern and went over um, how you can take what you learn here to build a state machine. And so we're gonna do that state machine building here. So we think it's always good to be able to uh, like think of or like build concepts up from first principles. So if you understand the state pattern, you can always build the state machine versus just memorizing how to build the state machine and then just coding the state machine. I mean, it'll work fine, generally speaking. So the state machine um, is, is well designed and it'll work, but being able to um, derive that from first principles is always good. All right, so and of course you see this demo here. This is just the AI playing itself. Uh, this is not networked yet, but we just have just so that you can see things happening and it's the AI playing itself. So here we have this player controller class and, and we can show you how you know some of this is set up here. We're not gonna cover all of this just because it'd be too much to cover. So we're, we've got this player controller and this player controller class um, is, is in charge of controlling the player pieces. So um, that's where we have the state machine and it'll decide what it'll do. So let's just look at these states. So there's this idle state, which means it's doing nothing. Wait for dice roll. Is the state machine waiting for the player to click anywhere on screens, roll the dice. Select from yard. So this is the yard right here for blue. And that means these are the pieces that are still uh, not yet in play. So when you select from yard, you gotta click on one of the pieces out here. Let me refresh this so you can see. So all the pieces are out. So they all start with the four pieces in the yard. And when you roll a six, then you can select a piece from the yard. So that's the state. And there's a select from board state. So if you roll not a six, um, when you have pieces out there, then you can select one of your pieces to move how many spaces the dice specified. So that's select from board. And then turn complete is just to let to switch to a state when your turn is over. So you've selected your piece, it's moved around and your turn is now over. Then you go back to idle afterwards while, while the other players uh, do their thing. All right, so those are these states and we define these as enums here in this uh, states enum with all these states. So we're using TypeScript here and going forward, we're gonna use mostly TypeScript. Um, when you're building games that you're actually going to ship, using TypeScript is probably better. And we're gonna try to help you um, understand it better if you're having problems with, with that. So we already have a state machine class. So what we're gonna do 
is make a new state machine. And we're gonna maybe simplify this a little bit um, in this video, but it'll basically be this state machine class, but we're gonna uh, write it live here on video. Let's go back to the player controller here. So let's look at one of these states so you can get a feel for wafer dice rule. Nope. Let's go to the actual uh, enter. So each state has an enter, update, and then exit. And so when a, so for example here, wait for dice roll enter uh, tells the whatever controller, AI player controller. So if it's an AI controller, it will go active and then just uh, pick a, uh, cause a, a dice roll. If you're the player, then you have the opportunity to click on the game. And then let's look at select from yard enter. So every state is enter, update, and exit. You don't need to, you don't need all of them. Um, you don't need any of them, quite frankly, because idle has, has nothing. But the state gives you an enter, update, and exit for you to, to do whatever actions. So enter, you can set things up, update if your state um, causes things to happen every frame. You do that in update, and then when you're done, you can go to exit and clean up or whatever you need to do. So that's enter. You see yard enter is the controller, whether the player or the AI does a select from yard. And then you, know, you wait for the player or the AI to do the select from yard, and then you come back and you go to wait for dice roll um, after the yard piece has been selected. So you would click it and then move it over to the starting spot and then wait for another dice roll. And then so when you do set state, a new state, anywhere within the exist current state, uh, exit will be called. You can do whatever you need to do for that. In this case, we are disabling um, the game object pointer up. This is in phaser three. Uh, the game object pointer up event. So this is the key here. You have enter, you do some stuff in the beginning, maybe some setup, whatever it might be for your state. Then there's an update if you need it for any frame, um, frame by frame updates you need to do. And then when you've decided that you can leave that state, then the exit um, event or the exit method is called or the, or the uh, whatever function you pass in. So we're gonna give our states or state machine for each state an object with optional enter, update, and exit functions, like here, right? So this is a plain object that we're creating and we're giving it an on enter, on exit, or on update, which we're not using update anywhere here, but you'll see if I uh, bring on the IntelliSense here, on update is another optional property you can give to this object. All right, so let's make a new state machine. So let's come over here. So we have this and we can always reference this if we want, but let's just build it from scratch. So new state machine dot TS. So export default class, we're gonna set this up, new state machine. So we could have an interface for our state machine, like an I state machine that we can implement here, but we don't have that. And we don't need it for this particular example. We could just match our current state machine interface and I assume we're getting this, but let's just, um, the core things are here is add state. Let's close this. So add state. We want to add a state, and the first thing we want to do is give it a name, right? So we want to give it some kind of state name, idle, wait for dice roll, whatever it may be for your characters, it may be something different. Um, and then let's call this config, and what the config is going to want is the on enter, right? And this is going to be optional. If you don't have an enter, you don't have anything to do an enter, you don't need to do it. Um, so let's see, void, let's start with that on update. Uh, let's say we'll be given a delta time and it returns nothing. And then an on exit, also optional. Did this wrong. There we go. On exit. Also optional. It does that. Right, so let's just make this interface state config a little bit easier to read. So we're gonna put this over here. You can better see what we've got here, and then this config is going to be state config. 
right? So let's see, look at player controller. You see, we do add state and we're gonna give it a name, name, and then some sort of config. Now we want to store these states so that we can um, look it up later by name. So let's create all the states and we're gonna use map. This is a TypeScript uh, data structure. You could use a plain object. Uh, we're just gonna use a map here. And we're gonna type this string for the key for the, or the name of the state and then an actual state, which we'll just call it, we'll call it state, we'll call it state config. There we go, let's see. Oh yeah, right, new. So when we get here, this.states.set, so we're gonna set name, and then we're gonna set the config. Now, if you recall in phaser, there is a context. So when you pass these things in, you see that we're not actually giving any context, right? So the, 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 the JavaScript context that is gonna be invoking this method was so that with, so that this is gonna be this uh, player controller class. What we did instead in our implementation here is in the constructor, we pass in a context that we're gonna say every um, function that we give to these states use the same context. So let's actually also do that. So constructor, we'll take a context, it'll be optional. All right, and then private context, and it will be any. And then this dot context, context. So what we're going to do here is actually bind the context for each of these passed in um, functions in the state config right here. So what we're going to do is remake this uh, state config. Also oh, on enter is going to be config dot on enter. And let's see if I can do this. So if there is a config dot on enter, so if we pass it in, we're going to bind that function to the context and then set it into this on enter. Same thing with on update. We want to do config dot on update dot bind this dot context. So this question mark is the TypeScript um, optional bind um, optional chaining operator. So that just means if this is undefined or null, it'll just uh, not do the rest of this and this will get undefined. On exit. So same thing. Right, so the key here is we need to bind the context for these functions so that, for example, when we go to wait dice for enter, this right here, the this here is gonna um, be the, the player controller, the, this that we expect from this method. Okay, so that's add state. So next, set state. I'm gonna give it a state name. And so when we set state, and it's very simple when there's no other state running. So let's just consider that case. So first thing we need to, uh, let's, let's save a current state. So just say the state config and it could be no. So first thing, this dot current state is gonna be, we're gonna get the, the state that we stored in the states map here, right? So we get the current state, then we do this dot current state dot, dot on enter if it exists, let's see. So we can do this instead, this dot current state dot on enter. Ah, yes, because so thinks it's null. Let's do this, if this dot states has name. So if for some reason it's not there, we're going to not set state. So now this will always be, well, we know that it's defined since we're checking it. I guess TypeScript can't actually tell because it's using the map property, the map data structure. 
So here we go, on enter, so we could do this, yep, no we can't, okay. So if there is on enter, then we call on enter. There we go. So that's when there's no state set, right? This is like the first time you're using it um, and there's not already a state running. So now if there was a state running, so let's say you were already in wait for dice and now you're going to select from yard. So what you want to do is call the on exit of the current running state. So if this dot current state, so if we have a currently running state, I'm going to do this dot current state dot on exit. So if this dot current state and this dot current state dot on exit, we're going to call on exit on the previous state. So if you're doing, if you're in um, wait for dice and we're going to select from yard, we're going to do on exit on wait for dice and then get the new state we're going to, which is select from yard, and then call on enter on the new state. So now that's enter and exit for these states. So next we need to do update. So if we do update, let's just add a little update method to our state machine, which will need to be called. And so if not current state, I'm gonna do nothing in this update, but if we do have a current state, then we're gonna do on update. And we're gonna pass in the delta time. Oh yeah. Right, this doesn't work, right? Oh, this does work. So we could actually do that here. No, that looks kind of ugly. That was the complaint. I can do it here. Fascinating. I'm actually surprised this part. I've never done this before. So this in this video here, this is the first time I'm using this. That does not work. There is an error here. Okay. Okay, we can't. Um, oops, we can't invoke a possibly undefined null function with the optional chaining operator. So if we have the update, then call it. Curious to know what I did previously. We'll check that later. Okay, so that's update. Right now, this looks like it's more or less all the things. So let's just see if we if we replace it, what happens? So we're not quite done yet, but let's we'll just replace. Um, this state machine with our new state machine. So let's go import new state machine from state machine, new state machine. So here we are. What is this? We're going to call this new state machine. This is our state machine class property. So we do need that. Okay. New state machine. Well, there's a name that we're using. Uh, okay, add state. Yep. Okay. So this is actually going to be optional, number one, right? For the for the states that don't have any sort of on enter update exit. And then let's give this a name. So we have a name here uh, that I previously set up so that when we're logging things out, you see here. Can do state machine yellow, state machine blue. So it's just to get, so you can when it logs things out, easier to see uh, who's doing what. Let's just set that here. Right, great. Let's see what do we do. Okay, yep. So for this um, method chaining, just return this, and we could do that here too. All right, so like this part is matching our previous interface. Now just make sure we get rid of some of these errors. Is current state and okay, is current state. Let's, okay, is current state. So I think that's giving a name. So what we're gonna do is give it an optional name here. So what we need to do is check that the current state's name is, so if not this not current state, return false. So if there is no current state, then obviously it's false. 
uh, this dot current state dot name equals name. So we're going to return this. No, yes, this is also optional. And in that case, we're just going to we can use the I think this is the no coalescing operator. It just meaning that if this is undefined, we're going to give it this different value. You can you also see the or uh, the uh, uh, double bars as well uh, for this. This is the newer operator, and I think this is actually more specific. The or just happens to work uh, the way the language works. Either way should be fine. So let, we're going to just call this uh, machine. How about FSM, finite state machine. Um, okay, so there's that is current state. Let's save that. And what we need to do is do this when we set this config. So this is optional. Name is optional. Uh, sorry, this name is optional. And we can just set it here by whatever the, the name of the state is. When we add it, we're going to create it in this new state config we're making that we're storing in this map when we do the lookup in set state. All right, so let's go back here. All the errors are gone, but now let's just see what the game does. So uh, I used to roll a six before any piece can come out. Um, I believe there will be an error, but let's see. It may work just fine, um, which would be unfortunate if I can't show you what, what the other things that we should do in a state machine. So it may not do it. We'll let it go. So let's just think through this a little bit. So what happens if you're in a state, right? So you, you're, you're okay, so you have no state. You're in idle or you're in the idle state. Um, and then you go to some other state, let's say wait for dice roll. Um, and then in wait for dice roll, let's say you exit the wait for dice roll state in the enter, although I guess that's not possible. Okay, but the, the thing to guard against is in the, in the cases where you're going to a state and then you do almost nothing in that state, right? So you would, you would come here, uh, the other state's exited, you get your state, you call enter, and now from within the enter of state one, you call set state to go to the new state, go to another state while state one is still happening, right? So on enter, you're gonna go set state, uh, state two. And what happens is we come back in here, the current state on enter is happening. And uh, so then we go and then we're gonna call on exit. So before on exit, uh, rather before on enter is finished, on exit will be called. So depending on how your code logic is structured, there may be instances where you're not expecting on exit to call, to uh, to run and finish before on enter is finished. So let's say you do some stuff and you and you don't um, set everything in in uh, on enter, but then you switch state. Then you get to on exit. It's going to be called before enter is actually finished. Now clearly it's not really a problem and you may never run into this issue depending on what, what your game is doing. But in some cases you may get that problem. So what we're gonna do, oh in fact we naturally, oh no, we are calling update, right? Let me just do one more check. Update, okay, yeah, we are calling state machine update. Almost forgot. We need, to, we need to call update on the state machine so that our update, uh, the on update method gets called on our individual states. Okay, so let's just make this a fix um, in case you ever run into it, you may need this. So what we want to do is if we're in setting a state and then a new state is to be set before we finish setting the original state we're already in, we're going to delay that until later. Okay, so we're going to do this uh, really easy with a Boolean flag here. So is uh, switching state, let's say, false. So when we get up here, so we have the state, um, this dot is switching state true, right? So while we're doing this, um, it's true. And then when we're done, it's false. So we're, we're done switching states, right? The switch state is done on exit gets called, it's run, 
Uh, we get the new state, on enter gets called, it's run and it finishes. So that's this block. Now if if this dot is switching state, so if for some reason we're calling set state again while we're in on enter, so on enter hasn't finished, right? So this is not false yet. On enter is running and we're calling set state. We come in here, we see switching state is true. We are going to not uh, do the set state logic. We're gonna do it later. We're going to queue up a, a, uh, the state. So private state queue, let's say, and this is just gonna be a list of sh uh, strings, okay? State queue, so this dot state queue dot push name. So this is the next state to run. And we're gonna run that after this is done. And that's gonna happen here in update. So update will be called after this set state method is finished. We'll, we'll come out of on enter, uh, switching state will be set to false, return this, something happens, and the next tick on our game loop happens and then update will be called. So uh, if this dot state queue dot length, so if we have states queued, so this is, could be the case where you have on enter does a, does a set state, then on that on enter for the new state does a set state on the on enter, et cetera. And so this will queue them all up so that they all fire one at a time in sequence as you would logically expect it to. Okay, so if this dot state queue dot length, so if there is, we're gonna shift, so this is a queue, so first in, first out. We're gonna do um, name this dot state queue dot shift. And I think this is gonna say, greater, it's greater than zero. This is gonna be undefined, but we know it's not undefined because we're checking that there is at least one in here length greater than zero. Then we do set state uh, name, right? There we go. So that is correct. Yeah, because you don't really want your state. So, yeah, okay, so we're not putting it under update. So if you're calling on enter and on enter, in your enter state, you call set state, you don't expect your current state to run the update. But you can play around with this if for some reason you do want that. Just move this to after the update is called. Okay, so that does set state and then it goes to updates. And in fact, we may actually want to exit out early because uh, there's no states to update. Yeah, we can play around with that. That may be a little bit trickier. Okay, so this is all still working. I think. Did we get two pieces out? That was fast, rolls of six. Okay, so this is the state machine and that's basically it. So now let's, well, let's add a, we'll add a um, previous state. So I think the console, let's refresh this. Oh, because our art doesn't print. I just compare against our other state machine. I just want to see what my log here is. State machine, this done ID, change from current state to name. Yes. I just take this before we call that exit just to get these logs here so you see. And we did not call it ID in our uh, new state machine implementation, but nonetheless. Now you see that we have these logs here. So switching from blue, red, I'll move myself. Uh, change select weight does, okay, it's going pretty quickly. But you see the various state transitions, and in 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 a more advanced implementation of this, you can have transitions instead of calling set state directly. You would create transitions and then define them ahead of time, and then run transitions that then change from uh, one state to another that you've set ahead of time. You may want that if you just want it to be more organized, because in this sort of way, the way we have, you can go from any state to any state, uh, there's there's less um, organization or planning in this case, but this works for, for very simple cases. If you need more organization or, um, what do you call it? Uh, 
if you just want to like define and know that you can only go from state A to state B and not from state A to state C, you make a transition that's, you know, whatever the name is that goes from state A to state B and you run that transition. Opposed to situations where you really can't go from A to C, but without something blocking you, you can just call it. If you're in state A, go uh, call set uh, state C from A and something bad might happen. So just to be more enforced, the logic, you can add transitions. That's building on top of this basic state machine implementation. So now let's actually compare this a little bit from our initial state machine. So we do create a previous state here. Um, oh look, uh, previous state here. And we didn't really have a need for it in our player controller. Uh, so we'll leave that alone, but it's not that complicated. You just store the previous state when you do set state before you change state. Right here. And otherwise update. So this is about right. Yeah, we already exited. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's basically the same. Uh, there's not too much different here. Uh, we added this I state. Call things differently. So whenever I, you know, code things, uh, I may use different names for whatever reason. I state or state config. I'm not sure which one is better. Uh, okay, I just did this here. Yeah. Right. Okay, so this is the state machine implementation. Um, feel free to, you know, use this in your games. It'll definitely help to organize your logic. Uh, so you can basically put everything inside your enter, update, exit functions or methods in whatever class you're already in. It could be a phaser scene. It could be anything. You just specify this context in the... Uh, when you make your state machine constructor there. And then you just call set state to go from one state to another state. And that is basically it. Um, if you need um, a recap on the state pattern in general, go to the state pattern for characters, for character movement in phase three on the arcade blog at blog.arcade.co. Now, if you like this video, do hit like and subscribe for more videos that we've got coming that we're gonna talk about uh, features and uh, libraries and processes for uh, shipping actual games. And so look forward to this Ludo party game we're gonna have. We don't know exactly when we'll have it out, but um, it's gonna be multiplayer. And we will do another video covering multiplayer, uh, how to implement real-time multiplayer uh, for your game. So let us know if there's anything else you would like to see uh, for shipping games.